have been talking about diffusion and osmosis as being passive transport. Now remember, passive transport is the movement of molecules without using energy. So diffusion is the movement of all substances except water from high concentrations to low concentrations. Osmosis is just the diffusion of water. So remember, passive transport is the movement without using energy. Now we're going to talk about active transport, and this is the movement of substances using energy. So when cells have to move materials from the opposite direction, meaning that it has to move up the concentration gradient, it has to use energy to do that. So remember we used the example of you guys at a party. Now you're outside, you've already cooled off and you want to get back into the party. Well now you have to use energy to get back in. Maybe you have to go in with a group of friends. Maybe you have to um, talk to the guy at the doors and letting you go back in. Somehow you have to use energy to get back through that door. You have to push your way in. Well, there are certain substances that have to move from a low concentration to high concentration. And those substances require energy to move up its concentration gradient. So some examples of active transport, uh, transport are those pumps that I mentioned earlier in the couple lessons ago. So proteins, or pumps, are found in the cell membrane, and they transport molecules across the membrane. Now specific ones called carrier proteins will actually carry important nutrients from outside the cell to inside the cell. So remember, we're specifically talking about activities that require energy. So in this bottom picture here, you see that we have a couple of these square green guys. They want to move inside the cell. They're going to require energy. So in this picture, we have two square green guys. They're going to move using this carrier, or carrier protein across the plasma membrane because now they want to go to the area of high concentration inside. They require energy to do that. So take in this picture, notice ATP. ATP is energy. Adenosine triphosphate. Don't have to remember that, but just remember ATP. This is extremely important. Energy is required for moving, high, um, for moving low to high. Now if there are molecules that are just really, really big, we need to do a different kind of process. Active transport might not necessarily work. Instead, we're going to use two different types of transports. We have something called endocytosis that your body will, t will start to use when large particles need to be moved across that plasma membrane. So if you take a look at the picture on the left, this is what endocytosis does. The cell will actually sort of take in the large particle by engulfing itself using vesicles. Vesicles are kind of like a transport mechanism that moves things from your plasma membrane to inside the cell. So in this picture, notice that the vesicle sort of opens up through the plasma membrane, lets all of these things in, and then it's going to surround it. And now it's uh, taken into the cell and delivered to where it needs to go. That's endocytosis. Think of entering, endo. In exocytosis, this is where your cell wants to get rid of particles. So maybe it's a waste product, or maybe it's something that just needs to move outside the cell, but it's too big to move across that plasma membrane. In this case, the vesicles are going to engulf the object inside the cell, and then it's going to move to the outside. It's going to open up through that plasma membrane, allowing the stuff to enter out. This is exocytosis. Think of exiting or exo, exit. And finally, just a review, and this is something that's in your notes. So fill in the red spots in your notes so this way you have a really good review of these methods of transport. We did, we just talked about active energy and that's down here in the bottom. Active energy, uh, I'm sorry, active transport uses energy in order to move things from areas of low concentration to high concentration. It uses energy, your ATP, which is right here. 
active transport requires carrier proteins. And those carrier proteins will take in those molecules and spit them out where they need to go. That's what requires the energy, that carrier protein. We also discussed diffusion and facilitated diffusion, which are examples of passive transport where no energy is used whatsoever. In this case, we have substances that move from high concentration to low concentration. Now specifically diffusion, we have to consider the difference between substances and water. So osmosis is just a type of diffusion, but it's just for water moving from high to low. Diffusion is for everything else. And we also talked about facilitated diffusion, where things do have to move from high concentration to low concentration. However, transport proteins are needed here. So this slide right here is a great review for all the methods of transport. Look at it, study it, ask questions about it, and we can always discuss them in class when you see me.